ghost inventory. Maybe you've heard of ghost inventory and already have a concept of what that is, but you clicked on the video. Most of you, I suspect, haven't heard of it or don't have a clear idea of what ghost inventory is. Well, it's definitely a problem that can cost you sales, make you have to do lots of returns, or even get you kicked out of various programs like TCG Player Direct. So it's definitely something that you want to be aware of and be able to mitigate the risks of. So thanks for clicking in the video. We're going to talk all about ghost inventory in this one, what it is, what effects it can have on your business, how it happens, and what to do about it. My name's Chase. This is TCG Bulk Kings, where every card has value. And uh, we're gonna get right into this right here. So ghost inventory, it doesn't have an according to Hoyle definition, but generally the concept of ghost inventory is uh, inventory that shows up in your inventory system, either on TCG Player, eBay, um, whatever inventory system you might be using, but isn't actually physically present on the shelf, right? And this doesn't just apply to cards, this applies to any type of business that sells products. So uh, before I got into cards, I spent 10 years working in auto parts stores and another three years working in bookstores. And my main job in these, these uh, companies was inventory management. So I have a lot of experience with inventory management and where and how things can go wrong so that you appear to have inventory that isn't really there. This is the so-called ghost inventory. So if you've got stuff that you have listed in the in the database on TCG Player or eBay or wherever, and someone goes and buys it, and then you can't actually physically come up with the product to send them, it's gonna have a bad time. That will result in having to do a refund to a customer that you are going to send the product to directly yourself. Or if you're participating in a program like TCG Player Direct, then, you won't send them that card and then they'll have to go out into the marketplace and buy another card to replace it and charge you for it. Now, I haven't really talked a whole lot about the new TCG Player Direct accuracy requirements that have come out. This is uh, a couple weeks old now, but basically everybody who is in the TCG Player Direct program is expected to comply with a requirement of having a 98% accuracy on all of their reimbursement invoices. And so this means that the cards you're sending off in your big shipment to TCG Player, uh, that they have fulfilled the orders for you and you're backstocking their warehouse, you have to be at least 98% accurate. One in 50 cards is allowed to have a mistake. You know, that's either conditioning or not being present or something like that. So it includes both those kind of things together. So if you sell a bunch of near mint cards and you send them heavy played cards, they're gonna ding you for that. If you sell a bunch of cards and then you don't actually have them, ghost inventory, so you don't send them in, they'll ding you for that. At this time also, it looks like that if you send in the wrong card, it's going to ding you twice. So if you send in a hollow and you were supposed to send in a reverse hollow, um, then you're going to get charged for an extra card or dinged for an extra card discrepancy as well as a missing card discrepancy. So it's very much something that you want to avoid. They have been kicking out people who have been, uh, from what I understand, very far from meeting that 98% and people who are close have been given some leeway. Um, I don't have that information for sure, but anecdotally, that's what I've heard. So how does one get ghost inventory? How does that happen? There are various ways that uh, you could end up with something listed or in your inventory system that isn't physically on the shelf. So the most common way for me, this does happen to me, so don't think that it doesn't happen to me, it happens to everybody, is when you enter the wrong amount when you're first listing your cards. So if you, specifically on TCG Player, if you're using the pricing tab and you're typing in how many of a card you have. So you have five of this Olvenwald tracker here, foil, and you accidentally type in 55. You accidentally type tap the button twice and don't notice when you change that, then the, the database, the system doesn't know that you don't actually have 55 of them. It's going to put 55 of them up for sale and say you sell 10 of them. Now you've sold five ghost inventory. That can also happen if you just count wrong. You're counting, you count you have five, but you actually have four. 
That extra one is ghost inventory. Again, the system doesn't know what your actual amount of cards is, so that's that's an issue. And you can say that that would be something that would be mitigated by using automation like Quicklist or a Roka sorter or something like that, but they're going to count things wrong sometimes. It just happens. You have to double check those systems. Also, listing the quantity that you have under the wrong card. So, for instance, if you have 10 copies of Descendant Gust Wave Red from Outsiders in Flesh and Blood, and you actually listed 10 copies under Descendant Gust Wave Yellow. Those are different cards, they have different titles, they're not the same card. Uh, you have Then you put your red ones in the box, like you're going to sell them, but the computer thinks you have yellow ones and they sell yellow ones. And when you go to pull the orders, there's no yellow ones there because you only had red. That's ghost inventory. So this happens a lot uh, with things that have various parallels or alternate versions. So foils versus non-foils, um, showcase frames versus basic frames, different variations among foils, so like surge foils in some of these more recent magic sets recently versus regular foils. Uh, if there's alternate artworks, um, thinking of things like um, old school like Fallen Empires where there's four different versions of a bunch of different cards. If you list it under the wrong one, that's ghost inventory. Um, this also happens a lot with uh, uh, even more with automation where the machine's going to pick up the wrong version of a card and list it and if you're not carefully monitoring it or taking steps to keep that from happening then it's going to give you the wrong listings that then get added to your inventory. So again, that just has to be carefully checked up on. Uh, another way you can end up with ghost inventory is if you pull the wrong card when you go to ship something to somebody. So say you sell, say you have 10 Olvenwald tracker foils and 10 non-foils, and someone buys 10 foils and you go and you ship them the non-foils. Then someone comes along and buys five of the non-foils. When you go to find them, they're not there because cards on your shelf no longer accurately reflect what is in your uh, inventory or vice versa. So now that you've shipped that off, you don't have a physical card to send them. That just, again, it results in a return or discrepancy on your reimbursement invoice to direct. There are probably other ways that this, that this kind of thing can happen. Um, if you put stuff in the wrong place, and you, it makes you unable to find it, right? If you, say you list a bunch of cards and you accidentally file the cards in the wrong set and then when you go to try and find them, you can't find them and you don't have any way to backtrack and figure out where you inaccurately filed them away. And then you have to do a refund because you can't find those cards. Uh, even though you do still physically have them somewhere, you may end up finding them six months later um, you accidentally put a bunch of Throne of Eldraine cards in, under Theros Beyond Death and it never occurs to you to check the set symbols when you're flipping through stuff for the next thing. I can definitely say that's happened to me in the past. Uh, there's probably other ways. If you think of any other ways uh, or have had experience with any other ways that you've ended up with Ghost Inventory, make sure you comment below because that'll help everybody who watches this video to try and avoid those type of situations again in the future. So. Ghost inventory, what do you do about ghost inventory? That's probably the big question on everybody's minds because obviously we want to avoid those kind of problems. So um, the first thing you need to do is not blame the database, the system, whatever it is the, that you're typing in the amount of inventory that you have, however you're doing it, don't blame that. Those things don't make mistakes. Humans make mistakes. Sure, a, an automated system will misidentify cards sometimes, maybe more than we want them to, but it's not the machine's responsibility to get it right. It's the people who make the machine's responsibility to get it right more often, and it's our responsibility to double check. It's our inventory, it's not the machine's. We have to make sure that we are the ones who are holding ourselves accountable. That's the first thing, is to make sure your mindset is at taking accountability for the issue. The next thing is you have to take measures to limit the possibility of these types of issues coming up. And what kind of you know measures can you take to avoid these mistakes? Things that have worked for me is really all I can tell you, but things that have worked for me, I try to only list cards from the same set and the same category at one time, unless I've got a bunch of stuff that is 
all over the place but is really urgent to list in which case i'll do them one at a time um i will um if i've got a big stack of things uh i'll make sure that i'm listing only non-foil common and uncommons from streets of new capenna for instance right uh, i won't have five different sets or commons uncommons rares mythics foil and non-foil mixed together or whatever uh, what this does is if i'm using the pricing tab i can make choices on the pricing tab that will reduce the number of different items that show up for me to type things into i can make it only show me non-foils i can make it only show me cards from streets of new Campana. i can make it only show me commons and uncommons um, and that way i can just work down the list and i don't have to worry about if i'm accidentally putting it in under foil or surge foil or etched foil or this frame versus that frame or you know having rares and mythics mixed in so that i accidentally list that i've got 25 of this mythic and when i actually had 25 of this common that was one row up and i made a mistake working across the screen those kinds of mistakes can be mitigated by just making sure that you are breaking things up into different categories and keeping the categories separate while you're listing. It's a lot harder to make a mistake, a lot of those kinds of mistakes if they aren't physically present on the screen for you to accidentally type into. Also, when I'm typing in, I make sure that I click for the prices uh, unless I have to type in like my floor price or whatever, but those always have a decimal in it. And then the, the quantity I'm entering never has a decimal in it. This helps keep me in, in my brain, keeping them separate so that they aren't, I'm not accidentally typing in that I have 100 copies at $1 instead of one copy at $100, for instance, right? And one thing also that I've taken away from my experience in retail inventory management is that stuff is just gonna go missing. And the best way to account for that is to periodically double check your quantities on hand for pretty much everything. So there are a couple of different methods that you can use to, to do that. Most retail places that I know of will um, do periodic checks of small sections of their inventory uh, so that the entire inventory gets checked every so often. You know, uh, go through, you know, one set per day or something like that just to double check it or, you know, one row in your boxes per week you know just to double check it um, or if you're adding cards into a set then you can double check the other cards in that set while you're doing it um, and that way you make sure that your quantity on hand is correct and the mistakes that uh, are there get caught um, and then the other method is to do a big full inventory count periodically something like once a year or um, even as uh, as often as once per quarter uh, for stuff that moves in and out quite a bit like ours does. Um, if you are very diligent about keeping your inventory organized and carefully separated so that it's not mixed in with stuff that hasn't been listed or it's not all over the place in different spots, um, but that it's all got its place and it's all set up and perfectly organized so you can always go and find something, there should be very few mistakes um, and it should be relatively easy to go back and double count everything to make sure that everything's right. Um, so those are the big ways that I avoid ghost inventory and make sure that I'm over that 98% accuracy rating for uh, TCG Player Direct. Now, I, they have recently sent out emails to Direct members to show what their accuracy rating is and you know i haven't really been trying too much other than just my normal inventory management that just is fully ingrained into my brain and my accuracy rating was 98.6 percent that that falls within their range i wasn't trying very hard um but if there's if if you have any of those issues then definitely you want to go back through and cycle count all your cards or inventory all your cards just to double check them and then make sure that you're doing these different things to help avoid making mistakes in the first place. Uh, and that will make sure that you're preserving a lot of those sales that you make and not having to issue a whole bunch of refunds or risk getting kicked out of a profitable program like TCG Player Direct. Like I said, if you have any stories yourself about ghost inventory, 
have figured out any ways that you've managed to avoid ghost inventory that I didn't mention, if you've had any experiences where you were surprised by uh, selling things that you didn't have and then figured out why it happened, please comment below. It'll help me, it'll help you, it'll help everybody else out. Let's all share our stories so we can make sure that we're all working towards a better, more controlled inventory. If this video was helpful to you, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more information like this. If you want to see more about my current inventory system, then check out this video on this side or check out the one over here on this side for something else that'll be interesting for you.